Hi YouTube, welcome back to my channel. Today, Nick and I are going fishing. It is actually the second day of elk season, so I feel a little, a little bit guilty going fishing, but last night when we were hunting, things were pretty slow. Like the elk haven't really gotten all spicy yet, so we're gonna go fishing. And while I was working today, we saw a ton of grasshoppers hopping all through the sagebrush. So I, I have a hunch that the fishing's gonna be good, but we have like two hours. So we'll see how many fish we can catch in two hours and enjoy this wonderful evening. It is Labor Day weekend, so things are pretty crowded. There are people tent camping on the side of the road, basically. It's a little bit of a zoo. I mean, even last night we saw more hunters than we did elk, which isn't fun, but. We've been on the road for two seconds and I spilled so much water all over my body, but I guess we're going fishing anyway, so. Just, you know, <laughs> getting ready. <laughs> So this is a trick that I learned whenever I was at the Kinsu Fly Fishing School. It's such a simple trick, but whenever you are lining, lining, what am I saying? Whenever you're putting your line through your rod, you pull out plenty, fold that sucker in half, and then it's a lot easier to feed through the little eyelets so that you can string up your rod a little bit quicker. Voila! So this knot that I'm tying is called a surgeon's knot. And unfortunately, you won't be able to see it very well because you're not zoomed in, but if you are new to fly fishing, I'd recommend Googling the surgeon's knot. There's one that you will need to learn if you plan on fishing a lot by yourself. Okie dokie. We are ready. There's some sort of mayfly, drake looking thing flying around. Yeah. Yeah, there's a bunch of them. I've seen like 10 already. It off. That was a beauty. I threw that in there like mm, 10 times and nothing hit it right off the bat. And I was like, they want it by now. They would have taken it. And then he took it. And that was a beautiful wild rainbow trout. He had some cool like orange stuff going on. Got another hit. Anyway. 
<laughs> I love crazy for a second. that marking on it? <laughs> he had some like damage on top of his back. I don't know if you can see that on film, but he reminded me of a manatee in Florida that has like dents all over their back from boats flying through the water and hitting them whenever they are near the surface. Kind of had some weird, weird stuff going on. Like a hawk or an owl? Maybe, yeah, actually. Alright, two in one hole, see if we can get through. Change the scenery. I'm gonna walk upstream a bit, see if we can find another hole. Do you wanna walk like up and around? Do you wanna walk through the water? Okay. I've got my kicks on. You've got some. Yeah, I guess you can't walk through the water. I could. Nick hates my shoes. Let them run. Don't try to just rip them upstream. Yeah, he's a nice fish too. He's the biggest one. So I latched on with that big gur fish, and I think I just kind of disturbed this whole area. So I'm moving on. Next spot. Because he's not going to grab on again. He's not feeling too good. One more hole, and then we're gonna go get some fish. Let's it was like directly under the tree. It's amazing that there's probably a handful of fish in here, and they blend in so well. That might work. Oh, it floated like three feet from him. No interest. I can see him. Oh, there's a bunch in there. Jeez, I can see like four or five tails now. They're not eating that.
good note to end on. <laughs> Losing your fly in a tree. They're all still there, but sorry. Pizza shop that we love closes early, so I'm actually more concerned with eating pizza right now than getting more fish. But that was a lot of fun. Thoroughly enjoyed that. It was a nice change from hunting for a little while. Good to mix hunting and fishing. Okay. You ready? How cool was that? Antelope with two fawns and cow with calf. So awesome. Nick and I were just having a discussion after we saw the antelope about whether or not you would shoot that antelope doe if you had a antelope tag right now. And we both agreed in this particular situation, no, because we don't normally see a lot of antelope up here. I don't think the populations are particularly booming. So in this circumstance, I'd probably leave her to help raise her babies. But there are other situations like in Pennsylvania where the whitetail populations are out of control in a lot of areas where it actually makes sense to kill a female. Um, you're not necessarily targeting female with young, but if that opportunity presents itself, technically speaking, for population control and for filling your freezer, it is definitely a reasonable option. And then that moose with her young, the first time I was ever fishing up here, we were with our friends Mike and Elizabeth and Elizabeth and I were walking through the willows with our fly rods and we pop up on the water 20 yards from a cow moose with two calves. And I am not comfortable around moose. I, actually, there were moose in our camp a couple videos back. There's another one right there. Oh. Told you. She's got an ear tag. Yeah. Damn. Oh my God. She's right there. He's right there. I was right here. <laughs> and I think you could see, I was visibly a little bit nervous being so close to them. I just know that they will charge if they don't feel safe. And I don't like that. Every other game animal runs from me and they do not. So it's interesting that we saw another mama with her baby there. Cause that is the first spot that I ever saw a mama with a baby moose. And that was actually the day that I was with Elizabeth was the first day that I ever caught a fish on the fly. And the picture is so embarrassing, but I'll show you guys. I didn't really know how to handle fish, first of all. Second of all, I basically caught the fish by accident. I was using a dry fly, but it was sinking because I didn't put any floating on it because I didn't know any better. And by some miracle, a brook trout ate it. And it was a very big brook trout, actually, for the size that brook trout are out here typically. So. That's a fun little story about that spot that we were just at, and um, yeah. Do you remember that day when we were fishing with Elizabeth and Mike? Yeah. You caught fish that day too. Not well. I don't remember if you caught it here, but you got some. You went further down. That was fun. Anyways, off to Pete. Oh. Yeah. 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 Yeah.